crafty friends welcome to today's video a couple of weeks ago i treated myself to this stamp set it's from do crafts and i believe it is called geometric neon or maybe just neon and it's lots of geometric shapes with a couple of sentiments and i posted a photo of it in my facebook group and on the community page here on youtube asking if any of you had this stamp set or something similar because I had a few ideas of things that I could do with it in videos and quite a few of you said yes you've got this stamp set or you've got stamp sets with geometric patterns on like this so I thought I would do a few videos using geometric stamps from this stamp set to share some ideas on how we can get the most out of stamps like this so don't worry if you haven't got this stamp set, if you've got circle stamps, arrow stamps, hexagon stamps, teardrop stamps, triangle stamps, square stamps, you'll be able to join in. Just to keep things simple, I've cut some smooth white cardstock into 4 by 6 inch-ish panels. The inks I'm going to use are Catherine Pooler inks. These are dye-based inks. I've got some from the Spa Collection and some from the Party Collection. And the reason I've chosen these instead of my Distress Oxides is that this stamp set is not made from photopolymer. It feels like silicon to me. And I find the Distress Oxides don't work so well with silicon stamps but dye-based ink ones like the Catherine Pooler inks do. The Ranger Archival inks I know work well with silicon stamps as well. So you use whatever inks work well with whatever stamps you have. The first thing I'm going to do is use this chevron arrow type stamp and do some repeat stamping. As this is the first time that I've used this stamp, I'm going to key the surface with a sand eraser. And this will just make the surface a little bit more receptive to the ink. I often find with photopolymer stamps, you don't need to do this step, but some silicon stamps seem to need it. So I'll ink this up with seafoam. Press it down and give it a few seconds to transfer. And I'm going to give it a second go. So there seem to be some marks and pits in the surface of this stamp. So it's not stamping particularly well. But you know what? I'm just going to stick with it. I'm going to embrace the distressed nature of it. So I'm just marking on here every two centimetres because this stamp is about one and three quarter centimetres tall in that direction. So if I place my next stamp at two centimeters then I will get a little gap and then I can do it at four centimeters and I'll get another little gap and it should be nice and even but what I'm going to do is move it down two lots of two centimeters and stamp this next one here because I want to stamp in a slightly different position on here on this next one. So we're going to do sea foam again. And now I'm going to drag that down another four centimeters. And do another sea foam. and then another four centimeters. And I can lift that off and I'm gonna push that back up there. And then I'm gonna line this one up 
in between those two but shuffle it along a bit somewhere like that and I'm going to now use winter green which is a lighter green blue we'll shuffle that down four centimeters So now I'm going to take this and add it onto the end here and this was my darker sea foam and I'm going to add the wintergreen here. So I'm continuing the pattern but I'm changing the colour and I'm going to pull that down four centimetres and I should be able to Get that lined up with that one. And I'm going to take this again and pop it on the end here. And this time I'm going to use the sea foam. I only need to ink up the end of the stamp because that's all that's going to stamp here. And now we can finish off the pattern and this again is going to be sea foam it's going to be the darker one and we only really need to do the tip teeny weeny bit of arrow to get on there and we're going to use the lightest colour for this and there we have a slightly distressed repeating pattern of chevrons in two a very pleasant greeny blues. So I've set the background to one side for a minute. I'm going to do some more stamping with the arrow stamp. I'm going to heat emboss some, I think gold, I think we'll use. And I'm going to create some gold arrows to cut out. I don't know how many I'm going to need, so I'm just going to do a load. So those have melted and have cooled, so I'm going to cut them out using scissors. And if you want to make these look a bit more like die cuts, you can run an embossing tool around the edge and it will bevel the edge. And I could use this as a full background on a 4x6-ish inch card. If I want to make my card clean and simple, I really need to preserve some white space. So I'm going to cut this down a bit. I'm going to take a bit off the bottom so that I can have a border. So I've chopped a bit off the top and a bit off the bottom so I get this neat border around the outside but I'm also slicing through two rows here and here which gives the sense that the piece was cut from a larger piece of pattern paper. I think I'm going to cut a two inch strip from this. 
so I've got a two inch and that'll be about two and well just over two inches so I could use either of these I can make two cards now and I'm thinking I will have this on here about here but I'm going to add a strip of white cardstock behind it to give it a border Currently slightly taller than my card so I'll have to snip off a bit but I'm going to pop it on about there I think and there we have a nice light green panel for my sentiment I'm thinking this happy birthday die because it's quite a blocky capital font which I think goes well with the geometric pattern and it just happens to fit really nicely there and I think I'm going to colour it with Uptown which is a very deep dark green blue from the Catherine Pola Spa collection so we're in the same colour range but stronger and perhaps more vibrant yeah. that stands off well there but I'm thinking I'm going to take one of these arrows put it like that across there and stick that on top of it so we've got a bit of gold to add a bit of bling and to separate background from the sentiment but I will pop this up on foam tape and the other arrows that I've heat embossed will be used for something else. I use my T-square ruler to get this lined up straight. I've got some high tack glue there, I can spread that out nice and thin, dip that in there, lay that on top there. And just to add a bit more shimmer and shine and dimension, I'm going to add a few Nouveau drops in pale gold just around this focal point here. So that's card one made with this stamp set and I've got some bits and bobs left over which we'll keep because what I'll probably do at the end of this little mini series is create a card maybe with all the leftover bits or we'll see what we can do with those. Right, I hope you've enjoyed the video and that it's given you some ideas of things you can do with geometric stamps that you may have in your stash. I will be back very soon with another video using this stamp set. So if you'd like to see that, subscribe and ring the notification bell. And as I say, I'll be back very soon. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.